In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, in, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary, and Louisa, in, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, Reign on earth, fiat. So in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. It was in the beginning. Our Lady Queen of all Saints. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. So one of the things that uh, we have is, is the relics of Louisa. Uh, this is something that's very, very important. Um, uh, the miracles that are going to come from Louisa are going to astonish the world. Uh, it's not just one miracle or two miracles. Uh, it's thousands upon thousands of miracles that are going to happen. And the reason is because Jesus is getting us ready for a new era. And um, what we want to do is we want to bring unity. There are many groups in the divine will, and uh, the Archbishop has asked that we all work that we all work together. And and you know there are differences and difficulties between some groups, but the main thing is that we all love Jesus, we all love Mary, and uh, we all love Louisa, and uh, we should all, as the Archbishop asked, that we all work together. Okay, so we're on page two. I'm sorry um, that you don't have um, copies. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, was, I was hoping you would. So on page two it says, Each knowledge that I, Jesus, have given you, Louisa, about my divine will contains a creative power. Okay, so what this means is this. Every time we read uh, a truth in, in the 36 volumes, God is giving us this this creative power that transforms us, and that's what God is. God is, wants to transform the whole world. Uh, he has redeemed mankind. Our Lady co-redeemed with Christ, and now what's coming is a uh, a new beginning for mankind. Uh, this new beginning for mankind uh, is going to astonish the world. The reason is because hello, oh, no, thank you, <laughs> thank you. The reason is because. Uh, when Jesus died on the cross, you know, he didn't want us to continue to live like this. Uh, be filled with fear, anxiety, complaints, negativity, and sin. This, is, this was not part of God's plan. Uh, but he needed to uh, heal us. And this is why he has given us the sacraments. Uh, the sacraments bring us healing, the, uh, uh, the uh, devotions that we pray help us to surrender to Jesus and and uh, and now Jesus says now is the time where he's going to bring about sanctification John Paul II Pope St. John Paul II said very clearly that uh, he believed in what Jesus told St. Uh, Faustina 
What Jesus told St. Faustina was very clear. He says, the final devotion that I'm giving to the church and to the world is the divine mercy before I return. That's that, those were words to, to St. Faustina from Jesus himself. So St. John Paul II told us, get ready for the third millennium. Get ready for the glory of the church in the new springtime of mankind. Uh, when it, in many of the apparitions, many of the visions, many of the locutions throughout the world, uh, Our Lady has said the same thing. My son is returning. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. With this great gift of the divine will, this is the life that our God wants us to live, the life that he originally breathed into uh, Adam. And when Adam fell, it took Jesus, the Son of God, Mary, the Mother of God, to come to earth to redeem, and Our Lady co redeem with Christ, uh, mankind. And now is the time of a new era. It's a whole new beginning for the world. And this is why... It, we, like I mentioned yesterday, we have been predestined by God to live at this time for something extraordinary. And a lot of people think, well, what we're going to do is they have in their mind, okay, I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to do this. And Jesus says, no, let me reign and I will tell you what to do. So Jesus is going to really direct us in a way that the saints would envy if they were, if they were on earth. Um, But they're in heaven and they know what's coming and they want us to embrace this gift. So, Jesus says, every truth that I've given to you, Louisa, uh, contains a creative power. Now, a creative power. As as you read this truth, as, as, as the word of God, Jesus Christ, dictated these words to Louisa, as you begin to read these truths, God, the creator begins to reign in you, okay? Now, we have to remember when, when Jesus was on earth, he said to, you know, Peter, when Peter was walking on the water and 20 feet out and Peter began to sink, he didn't go, good job, you went 20 feet and then you sank. He said, why did you fail? Why did you falter? Where is your faith? He said to Philip, you feed the 5,000. And Philip says, what, with even 200 days wages, I can, we can't, I have enough money to feed the 5,000. See, Jesus expected Philip to feed the 5,000. These are, this is the creative power that God wanted the apostles to have. That's why he said, you say to that mountain, move, and it must move. You say to that sycamore, be uprooted and cast in the sea, and it must obey you. What the divine will is going to show you is how to pray in a way that you've never prayed before. Now, I, I love the saints. Uh, the devotions are, are beautiful. But Jesus is basically saying to us, I want to give you more than what I gave to the saints. So that's why as you read this, as you study this, Jesus, the word of God, Jesus Christ, dictated these words that that contain creative power. That's divine power. And as you begin to pray, you're not, you know, what we've been doing for the last uh, 2,000 years is when we pray, we pray like this. Please, 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 (laughs) please. I mean, we're on our knees and we're, please. Jesus says, no, I want to teach you how to pray with a command as Jesus commanded. It's not give me a drink of water, not that kind of a command. But Jesus says, you with you, with your sinfulness, you know, would you give your, your son a, uh, a scorpion or a snake if he asks for, you know, water? He says, he says, how much more will the Heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask? So our job is to call the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. See, our job is to call fire down from heaven. Now, what the reason, one of the reasons we wear the scapular is because Elijah called fire down from heaven. The scapular is from Elijah. And what did Elisha say? He says, uh, Elijah said, what do you want? Elisha said, I want double your power. You know, and he says, if, if I leave my clothing there, if I leave my scapula there, it's yours. Our Lady now gave us, the, the Our Lady of Mount Carmel gave us the scapula. What is our main goal? It's to call the sacred heart of Jesus, the immaculate heart of Mary to the earth. Calm divine will. See, this fire is symbolized by, by Jesus' uh, sacred heart, by Mary's immaculate heart. This fire is so beautiful. It is so wonderful. 
that for us, it's going to be ecstasy. For the rest of the world, it's going to be wailing and grinding of teeth. Because they do not love Jesus. They do not want what God wants. So Jesus is asking us to do this for them so that they can give their fiat. Okay, so we love our family, we love our friends, and we know that our family and our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers, even our parishioners, are very much involved in the world, the flesh, and the devil. Uh, In every family, there's every sin going on. And uh, it might not be your immediate family, but the extended family, it's, it's sad. It's very, very sad. Now, we care for them, we love them, we want them in heaven. So Jesus is now saying to you, Listen to this. As you read these truths, I will give you a creative power. This is not human power. So our our Lord is asking us, he's asking us to begin to pray in a way that Jesus prayed, that Mary prayed. That's why our lady said to Saint, uh, our lady said to Louisa, uh, I'm going to teach you a way of heaven and no longer a way of earth. This, this glory that God is going to give to us uh, is going to make us so happy, so joyful, so peaceful, that it's going to be as if we are in heaven while on earth. There's no more worry, no more fear, no more anxiety, no more complaints, no more negativity. Everything is fiat. As we enter into this fiat, which, which Jesus she shows Louisa, we begin to live a life of heaven and no longer a life of earth. So Jesus says this, uh, these truths will, give, will contain a creative power, And everything is letting these knowledges out. Okay? As you read this, and and, and I I want to tell you what the Archbishop said. The Archbishop said, if you have a priest to lead you and to guide you, don't worry. But if you don't have a priest, he says, don't read these. Because what will happen is you'll read some things, and like with this creative power, and then people standing on, (laughs) come, you know, it's it's not going to be... What you think, what you see on television, it's got to be always within the church. And, and sometimes when people read, well, I now have a creative power, and I have a power. And no, you don't have anything. It's G- your, Jesus is reigning in you. And Jesus is speaking in your speaking. Jesus is alive in you. So, you, you, so the archbishop has asked, if you have a priest, um, then you can read. Because there are some things in here that can be very misleading If you don't have the guidance of the church. Okay. So. Like I said to Father this morning. I said. If if he knows you. And he knows that you you want to read. uh, You can get permission from him. But you just can't. See that's why the Archbishop doesn't want these books sold. It's This this is not for everybody. Uh, There will be great misunderstandings. um, uh, Like this line here. You'll have creative power. You know, it doesn't mean that you can, you know, bring people back from the dead. Uh, that will happen uh, someday, soon, I hope. But uh, at this point, no one possesses this gift, only Louisa. And, and as we strive to understand this, uh, God begins to teach us. Okay, so this is what he says. He says, and everything is letting these knowledges about the divine will out to the world. Because the power that they contain will know how to make its way into the hearts of people. To submit the people to the dominion of God's will. See, it's, everything is surrender. Like I, I mentioned yesterday, you have to be submissive, you have to be docile, you have to surrender. Uh, the, if, you don't, if you're not submissive, if you're not docile, if you're not surrendered to God... Uh, you're going to get in trouble because the devil's going to see this and the devil's going to mimic what God does. And that, that's the reason, again, for a priest. A priest can, can help you uh, discern uh, what God is saying. No human can discern clearly because the devil always mimics. As a matter of fact, St. Teresa says, if, if Jesus appears to you, the most beautiful image of Jesus appears to you and the bell rings for prayer, he, she said, you go to prayer. Because you never will know if that is Jesus or if that is the devil. You'll never know. So you have to submit yourself to the church. And she says, basically, when the bell rings for prayer, you go to prayer. You don't stay there talking to this. Because you don't know if this is Jesus or if this is. And Jesus wants to see. If it is Jesus, he wants to see if you're going to obey. If it's the devil, the devil wants to see you disobey. 
See, it's obedience is so important. Obedience is necessary. In uh, uh, Monte Cassino at uh, St. Benedict's, uh, there is the image of the virtue of obedience. And the image of the virtue of obedience is the angel like this with his hand to his ear. He puts his hand to his ear and it's to listen is to obey. That's the virtue of obedience. To listen is to obey. So when Jesus teaches us something, we have to obey. And uh, this is why uh, the devil wants us to be in disobedience. Our job is to be faithful in obedience to Christ and his church. To be obedient to Jesus as he speaks to us through the vicar of Christ. As to be obedient to Jesus as, as he speaks to us through the dogma and doctrine of our faith. Uh, our, our job is to say yes. Our job is to say fiat. And with that docility, with that submission, with that surrender, God can work very powerfully. So he says this. He says, did I not do this uh, with redemption? As long as I remained with my mama, Mary, in the hidden life of Nazareth, everything was silent around me. Although this hiddenness of mine, together with the celestial queen, served in an admirable way to form the substance of the redemption, so that I, Jesus, might, might announce myself as already present in their midst. But when did the fruits communicate themselves to the midst of the people? When I went out in public, when I made myself known, when I spoke to them of the power of my creative word. And as all that I did and said spread and keep spreading still now in the midst of peoples, then did the fruits of the redemption have their effects and still do. Indeed, my daughter, if no one had known that I had come upon earth, redemption would have had been something dead and effect, without effects for creatures. So knowledge gave life to its fruits. So again, as we read, as we study, as we understand these truths, the fruits of the divine will are going to be made manifest in us. And he says, the same will be for my divine will. Knowledge will give life to the fruits of my divine will. This is why I, God, wanted to renew what I, God, did in redemption, choosing another virgin, Louisa, remaining hidden with her for 40 years or more, segregating her from everyone as if the, in a new Nazareth to be free w with her of telling the whole story, the whole prodigies of the good contained in the divine will. So as to be able to form the life of my divine will in Louisa. And just as I chose St. Joseph together to be with me and my mama as our cooperator, tutor, and vigilant century for me and for the Blessed Mother, in the same way I have placed near you, Louisa, the vigilant assistance of my priests as cooperators, tutors, and depositories of the knowledges, the goods, the prodigies contained in my divine will. Okay, so this, this is what Jesus is doing. As he did in creation, as he did in redemption, now he's doing in sanctification. See, this is, this is a glorious time to be alive. Like I said yesterday, Saint Le Pope Leo XIII in 1900 consecrated the world to the Holy Spirit. So the century, the 20th century, was the century consecrated to the Holy Spirit. 100 years of praying for the Holy Spirit. In the 60s, the Vatican II happened. And John the 23rd prayed, may, may there be a second Pentecost. Now, at the end of that, that hundred years, John Paul II, on, on 1998, on Pentecost Sunday, said, Veni Creator Spiritus, come Holy Spirit. <clears throat> We've prayed 100 years for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The three vicars of Christ deliberately begged God for this outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The world cannot stay the same. So the devil is very, very angry. The devil is, knows he's, his head is being crushed. And as you put your heel on the head of a snake, the tail whips all over the place. And that's what's happening now. The devil knows his kingdom's coming to an end. And God is going to use us with Our Lady and Louisa to crush Lucifer's head. This is, this is what God has given to us. And, and he has, again, like I said, predestined us to do this. Now, as we link ourselves to Jesus and Mary and Louisa, God is going to work in us in a way that's going to be astonishing. Okay? So you cannot individually crush that of Lucifer. Don't even try. 
But with Jesus and Mary and Louisa, this is, this is going to be accomplished. So Jesus says in volume 19, he says, uh, 626, 26, 1926, my daughter, my daughter, you are the little daughter of my divine will, and you must not think only about occupying yourself with defending the universal rights of her God, giving him the return of love, return of glory, that everyone owes God as if all were one in such a way that God may find everything in you, Louisa, because our divine will involves everything and everyone. So, the one who lives in the divine will possesses universal ways. Therefore, she can give us, triune God, everything, and we, triune God, can recover everything. But as our daughter, she must also defend the rights of the sovereign queen, Mother Mary. She, our lady, operated in a universal way, and therefore Mary had a love, had a glory, had a prayer, had a reparation, had a sorrow for her God and for all of her children. So here, Jesus is saying to Louisa, you're not only going to defend God, Louisa, you're going to defend the, defend the Blessed Mother. Okay, so this is what we're going to do too. As Catholics, we're going to defend God. As Catholics, we're going to defend the Blessed Mother. But God's going to give us new power to do that. And, and this is the thing that's going to be so beautiful. As you enter this gift of the divine will, you fall more in love with Jesus. You fall more in love with Mary. You recognize Jesus as our Lord, our Savior, our God, our King, our all. We want to spend time with our Eucharistic Lord. But not only that, God wants us to defend his mother. We, he wants us to recognize her as our mother and queen. She's our everything. She's, that's why if you have a statue of Our Lady in your house, crown her. If you have a picture, crown her. She is mother and queen. If you have a statue outside, crown her. Let everyone know that she is our queen. She is not only our mother, but she is our queen. She is our mistress. She is, our, she is the mother of God, Theotokos. We want everybody to know this. So again, you're, you're going to see that you're going to have a greater love for Our Lady than you've ever had before. So this is what Jesus says to Louis. Uh, our Lady not, did not let one act escape her which the creatures owed their God. So our Mary would love God for us, for all our inadequacies, all our, our defects. Mary would love God for us, okay? Uh, as if we were actually loving God with the heart of Mary. See, this is why we love Our Lady so much. She's replacing our lack of love, our lack of integrity, um, with her love, with her integrity, so when God looks at Mary, she hears our voice. Because Mary is speaking for us. Mary is praying for us. So it says very clearly. Uh, and in closing all in her maternal heart, Mary loved everyone and each one in a universal way, in a Catholic way. See, the universal life is what, what God breathed into Adam. And Adam lost that universal life. Adam lost that Catholic life. So Jesus and Mary had to come to earth. Why? To start again the Catholic life. Everyone's going to be Catholic. Jesus says in, in volume 24, the last chapter of volume 24, the Jews will be converted, then the Buddhists, the Hindus, the Muslims, the Protestant, Protestants, everyone will be Catholic. It's going to be glorious. That's why do not, you know, the, do not uh, go against the faith. Uh, this universal life is the Catholic life that God breathed into Adam. Everyone is going to live the universal life. Everyone is going to be Catholic. How glorious is that? So, 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 so God is expecting us to live good and holy Catholic lives. So, in our Blessed Mother, we triune God found all our glory. Our Lady denied nothing to us. Our Lady gave us not only that which she was supposed to give us directly, but also that which other creatures had denied us. So Mary's making up for everything. And to act as the magnanimous and most loving mother who pours her own self out for her children, Our Lady generated everyone in her sorrowful heart. So she really became the mother of all. In each fiber of her heart was a piercing sorrow 
in which the Blessed Mother gave life to each of her children up to the fatal blow of death of her son, God, Jesus. The sorrow of this death placed the seal of the regeneration of life upon all the new children of this sorrowful mother. So you have to remember that at the foot of the cross, Mary sacrificed her son for us. She knew either Jesus had to die or all of us had to die. One of us, somebody had to die to, to redeem, be, to, for us to be redeemed. And she didn't want to lose us. So she sacrificed her son. I mean, can you imagine? What mother, what mother would do that? And she knew Jesus was the son of God. She knew Jesus was all beautiful, all pure, all holy. Now, a virgin queen who loved us so much, who defended all our rights, a mother so tender who had love and sorrows for everyone, deserves, this is now Jesus talking to Louisa, that our little newborn of our supreme will love her for everyone. So here, Louisa is the newborn. Louisa is the firstborn in the divine will. Uh, Jesus possessed it being the son of God. Mary possessed it being the mother of God. But no human possessed this since Adam. When Adam fell, everybody fell. And it took Jesus and Mary to come to earth to redeem mankind, our lady co-redeemed with Christ. And now there's a newborn. Okay, God has got something extraordinary for mankind. He's going to raise us up to receive the preternatural life that Adam had before the fall. This is not ordinary life. This is not to have a body that's food for worms. This is to live the life that God originally planned for Adam. So what God is going to do, and this is, this is what's going to be so beautiful, he says, I am looking for the souls who want this more than anything, and then I will give it to mankind. Which means he hasn't found anybody yet. That's the sad part. It's our job to want this so much that God will give this back to mankind. That means we're not supposed to get old, gray-haired, wrinkled, and die. That was never part of God's plan. God's plan was to be eternally young as God is eternally young. That's how Adam lived. Adam, as a matter of fact, in paradise, all the animals in paradise are still there. Mankind is the only one that's not there. We're spo- that's where we're supposed to live. We're supposed to be living in eternity. Not here trapped in time and space, so after about 100 years we rot in the ground. That was never part of God's plan. But that's because of original sin. We have to die. And thank God we have to die. Because can you imagine what we would look like in 500 years if we had that? It would be awful. Who's that over there? I think it's my cousin. I'm not sure. See, God is going to give us the glorified body. God is going to give us the, 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 the body that we were supposed to have in the beginning. I see. When Jesus, when Jesus died on the cross, is, does this mean that we live like this forever? That's what some people think. Well, we're, we're only human. No. Jesus wants us to share in divinity. That's why when the priest puts the drop of water in the chalice every day at Holy Mass, he says, may we share in the divinity of Christ, as Christ humbled himself to share in our humanity. We're that drop of water. We're the drop of nothing. As it enters into the cup filled with wine, it fuses and diffuses and becomes wine. It's not oil and water. It's not separated. God wants us to share in divinity. Now, if you don't believe that, some people go, oh, you know, read St. Peter. Read the epistle of St. Peter. He talks about being divinized, divinization. He wants us to share in divinity. And, and it's very, very clear that, you know, Peter knew that. Peter walked on the water. Peter saw Jesus uh, on Mount Tabor. Peter saw the, the, the dead rise to life through, through the power of Jesus. All of that is coming back. See, we're, going, we're called to live a life of, of God. St. Augustine says, God became man so man can become God. Small g. To share in divinity. God breathed into dust, into dirt, his image and likeness so that Adam could receive this life of God and give it back to God. 
So God is in competition with us. As we breathe in, it's Jesus saying to you, to us, I love you. As we breathe out, every breath should be to God, I love you. It's a competition. You breathe in, you breathe out. It's, it's the blood pumping into your heart. It's an I love you. The blood pumping out of our heart has to also be an I love you back to God. See, it's a competition with God. It's the wave coming against the shore, the wave going back out. The way God, it, this is natural for God. And he wants us to participate in him. So you can imagine, Jesus says, what's going to happen when the divine will reigns and people receive Holy Communion? He says, at that point, God is going to be there. Now, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, who is that uh, Indian from India? Gandhi. Gandhi said, I believe in Jesus. He says, but I do not believe in Christians. He says, because I don't see other Jesuses. We're supposed to be other. When you receive Jesus in the Eucharist, we're supposed to be other Christs. And see, that's, what's, that's what this great gift of the divine will is all about. Jesus is going to begin to reign in us in a way that's going to astonish us. This is what's so glorious. I mean, so glorious. Uh, so Jesus continues. Okay. Uh, now, of the Virgin Queen Mary, who also loves us so much, who defended all our rights... As mother so tender, who had a love and sorrows for everyone, deserves that our little newborn, our divine will, Louisa Picaretta, love her, Mary, for everyone. Return to Mary for everyone. Embrace everyone. All of our, all of our ladies' acts in our holy divine will. Place, in her, place her act united to hers. So Louisa, being the newborn, unites herself with the Blessed Mother. Because... Our Lady is inseparable from us triune God. Our Lady's glory is ours, and our glory is Our Lady's. More so since our will places everything, our holy divine will places everything in common. So when we look at the Blessed Mother, we see God. We see the daughter of the Father, we see the mother of the Son, we see the spouse and temple of the Holy Spirit. When we look at Our Lady, we see our invisible God. Radiating her. She says, My soul magnifies the Lord. We get to see who God is through Our Lady. That's why uh, when you enter into this gift of the divine will, you're going to fall more in love with the Blessed Mother than ever before. And hearing this, Louisa says, I remained a little confused as though unable to do what Jesus was saying. And I prayed to Jesus to give me the ability to do it. And Jesus continually told me, my daughter, my divine will contains everything. That's what he wants to give to us. My divine will contains everything. And as though jealous, it preserves all of its acts as if there were one alone. So God will do everything as if we were the only human alive. We, it's, it's, he becomes our personal Lord and Savior, as the Protestants say, but more. So, so Jesus says and so also it preserves all the acts of the sovereign queen. Oh, thank you. <sighs> Sorry. I knew it was coming. Holy cow. Okay. Uh, and it pres- preserves all of his acts as if it were alone. It preserves all the acts of the sovereign queen as if they were all its own because Our Lady did everything in the divine will and therefore my divine will itself will make them present to you, Louisa, and to us. See, we're going we're gonna to have a different relationship with the Blessed Mother. We're going to have a different relationship with Jesus. It's going to be what the saints envy. If they could envy, they would envy. We're going to be so close to the Blessed Mother, so close to Jesus, that as we pray, it's going to be their prayer in us praying. God, God is so in love with us. That now is the time that he's going to share with his children um, everything that he wanted from the beginning. Okay? Because it's the time. It's time for this to happen. 
Uh, so he says, therefore, my divine will itself will make them present to you and to us. Now, he says, you must know. And, and the thing about you must know is um, this is a command from Jesus. You must know this, that the one who has done good to everyone, the one who has loved everyone, has operated in a universal way for God and for everyone. And therefore, has the rights over everything and over everyone with divine justice. That's the Blessed Mother. Mary, who has done good for everyone as, her, as mother. Mary, who has loved everyone as mother. She's the mother of all. Has done, operated in a universal or Catholic way for God and for everyone. And therefore, has the rights over everyone and everything because of divine justice. So, now think about this. Jesus said to Faustina that divine mercy will be given before divine justice. Okay? Divine justice is coming. Divine mercy is coming to an end. Okay? I don't know when, but it's going, it's going to come to an end. When it comes to an end, then God has to give his divine justice to the world. Everyone has to receive what they want. That's God's divine justice. If we want Jesus, if we want Mary, if we want to be faithful to the church, if we want to be faithful and obedient Catholics, God is going to give us what we, what we live for, what we're longing for. If, we're, if we don't want to be faithful, if we want the world, the flesh, and the devil, God has to give that to us. And, and what does scripture say? The world has to go the way of the flesh. The world has to go the way of the devil. The world is going to be... It's going to be a new era that's coming. The devil has to go. And everybody who's with him has to go. The, the, the Protestants say that rapture, that the, all the good are going to disappear. Well, no, it's just the opposite. The bad are going to go. Just like with the flood. Uh, the, only family that, the only family that went through was the family of, of Noah. Why? If you read Genesis 6, it's very clear. Noah had a pure line to Adam and Eve. There was no inter interbreeding with the Nephilim, whatever the Nephilim is. I have no idea what that is, but there's, it says the, the Nephilim interbred with the humans because they saw the children of, of the, the daughters of Adam as beautiful. Adam, Noah was the only family that didn't interbreed and had a direct line to Adam and Eve. So God wiped everything out to start everything over again with the pure line to Adam and Eve. Now, Jesus says it will happen in the time, like in the time of Noah. We have to have a pure line to the new Adam, Jesus, and the new Eve, Mary, to get through what's coming. If we don't have the, that pure line to Jesus and Mary, if we don't have that love for Jesus and Mary, if we have interbred with the world, the flesh, and the devil, whatever that means, like the Nephilim, we don't, don't expect heaven. I mean, if you've lived a life of hell, that's what you have to have. Unless you convert. And that, that's one of the reasons why we're praying. We're praying that everybody converts. That our family, our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers, even our parishioners convert. So Jesus is saying, as it happened in the time of Noah, it will happen in, when Jesus returns, right? And, and what did Jesus say to St. Faustina? Very clearly, I, this is the final uh, devotion that I'm giving to my church before I return. See, we have to understand the time we're living in is really exciting. It's, 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 and God is talking to everyone. God is talking to everyone, and the devil is talking to everyone. Something is up. This is why Islam is on the, on the rampage, because things are going to change. And the devil wants his kingdom. I, I, Jesus' kingdom is coming. You, you have to understand, what is coming is so beautiful, as we call heaven to earth, Come, divine will, come breathe in my breathing. Come, divine will, come beat in my heart beating. Come, divine will. What happens at that point is heaven comes to earth. The devil has been banished from heaven. He will be banished from earth. He can't stay here. Mary wins. Mary is crushing the head of Lucifer. 
That's why the tail is going all over the place. So God is going to wake up the world. He's going to, there's, there's two signs. The first sign is earthquakes, floods, famines, plagues. Shaking the earth, ready, get ready. Why? Because nobody's ready. Everybody's involved in the world, the flesh and the devil. The other sign is for us. It's Louisa and the book of heaven, where there's peace, joy, and happiness. So what, what's coming, Jesus says, to those who live in the divine will, those in the divine will, the chastisements will have little or no effect upon those souls. Little or no effect. For the rest of the world, they will be screaming, wailing and grinding their teeth. As when we see the fire coming, which is symbolized by the sacred heart of Jesus and the man of the heart of Mary, we're going to be in ecstasy. Thank you, Jesus, Mary, for saving us, coming. And rede- you have redeemed us, now sanctify us. The love of God is going to come upon the earth. That's the fire of heaven. But for those that are do not love God, it's going to be wailing and grinding of teeth. Our, our God wants us to be ready for what's coming. And that's why he said to Louisa, in the worst of times, I'm going to give you the book of heaven. In the worst of times. Now, I was in the Vatican, in the secret archives of the Vatican in 1996. And these writings came out 19 years ago. The world has to change. Because God's going to change it. And I am just so happy that we have the writings. And uh, uh, I was the only one out of the five that never got any of the writings. So that, that was the fun part. I'm going, give me the right. And they go, you don't know how to read Italian. I go, but give me the right. So I was the only one that didn't have them. And, and now they're out. And I just, I see, Jesus says that as you read this, he changes you. As you read this, uh, and that's why you need a priest to help you, to guide you. As you read this, Jesus begins to show you a new way of living. And it's with Jesus and Mary. It's, it's brand new, um, a, a brand new life that the saints would envy if they were here on earth. Okay, so Jesus says this. Now, having operated, this is the Blessed Mother, in our supreme will, Our Lady has the rights of, in, in, of the possessions which Our Lady formed in our divine kingdom. Who else can return Our Lady uh, if not one who lives in the same kingdom. Okay, The return is the return of I love you. Okay, So Jesus says, every leaf on a tree, every blade of grass, every grain of sand, every drop of water is an I love you to us. And we have to begin to hear the I love you, see the I love you, smell the I love you, taste the I love you, touch the I love you's that are all around us. Our senses are made for God. But when we fell, we fell from such a height that we're blind, deaf, and dumb. We don't know how to use our senses. God is going to restore these senses. In the last volume, in volume 36, Jesus says that our senses are made for the glory of God. Paradise, everything in paradise is love. Everything in paradise is alive. There is nothing dead. There is nothing inanimate in paradise. We're going to participate in love. We're going to participate in life. We're going to participate in light. This, this, this love of God, this light of God, this, uh, is, going to, is going to be with us. It's going to be in, with, through, and for us. As Jesus begins to teach us how to live this life, we are filled with peace, joy, and happiness. Uh, like I said yesterday, when, when you're, 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 you have to get to the doctor's appointment, a car pulls out in front of you, and you don't give the Italian salute anymore. You, what you do is you say, Thea, Lord, you're in charge. I want to see what, what, why you want me not to be there at this time. Instead of getting angry, you know, you have a beautiful face that's in the family, and the, one of the kids knocks it over and it shatters. We've had this face for 5,000 years, and it's gone. It's Thea. It's, it's everything is fiat. There's no more worry, no more fear, no more anxiety, no more complaints, no more negativity, no more sin. As you begin to live this life, 
what happens is you begin to live a life of love. Live the life of Jesus. Live the life of Mary. So Jesus says this. In fact, only in this kingdom there is the universal operation, the Catholic operation, the love that loves everyone and everything, the love that embraces everyone and everything, the love from which nothing escapes. See, we're going to... It's, it's going to be the true life of Jesus, the true life of Mary reigning in us. Not just the virtue or two that the saints possessed, but the true life of Jesus, the true life of Mary. They're the new Adam and the new Eve. We're going to live their life. Who is the first to do this? Jesus says it's Louisa. And, and Jesus, the new Adam, has dictated these words to Louisa. The word of God dictated these words to Louisa. The mother of God dictating these words to Louisa. So it's the new Adam and the new Eve who have given the book of heaven to Louisa. And as you read this, your life can never be the same. It can never be the same. God is going to bring about a new beginning for you that's going to astonish you. And it's more than anything that you've ever seen before. Uh, uh, you, like I mentioned yesterday, one of the things that Jesus tells Louisa is as you begin to pray the rounds, the round of creation, round of redemption, uh, you're beginning to pray the prayers of Jesus and Mary. As you begin to pray these prayers, it's not the prayers of St. Ignatius. It's not the prayers of St. Francis. It's not the prayers of St. Teresa, which you've, we've been praying basically for the last 2,000 years. It's the prayers of Jesus. What did Jesus do when he was in the desert for 40 years, 40 days? What did Mary do for those 30 years in Nazareth? What did, how did she pray? Jesus has taught Louisa how to pray that way. And Our Lady says that these prayers are so powerful that anything that you pray for, watch what happens. That's why, if you haven't got a relic of Louisa, watch what happens when you pray to Louisa. The miracles are astonishing. I mean, they're all over the place. They're all over the world. Um, this one man showed up in, in, in Philadelphia, no, 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 Pittsburgh, uh, a month ago, and somebody gave him a card. Filled with, he was filled with cancer, fourth stage of cancer, and he kisses it and says, Louisa, help me. He goes to the doctor the next day, and there's no cancer. He never even heard of Louisa. He says, okay, I'll do anything at this point. I'll kiss, you know, and there are so many miracles. That why? Jesus is going to show us who his newborn is in a way that, again, this is a great secret. What, uh, what God loves, he keeps secret. He kept secret uh, Bethlehem. Only a few wise men and a couple shepherds show up, showed up. He kept secret the Last Supper. Twelve men were there. He kept secret uh, the resurrection. Nobody was there. He kept secret the ascension when 120 people were there. What God loves, he keeps secret. And I said, the, gr the greatest secret that we have today is Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. He's in every Catholic church and the churches are empty. The greatest secret is the scapular, the rosary. These are the clothing of heaven Mary gives us. That if you wear this and die, you will not suffer the flames of hell. I mean, this isn't magic. It's a secret that nobody knows. And even the Catholics, I, I had some good friends of mine who refused to wear the scapular. Thank God I was there when they were dying. <laughs> I put the scapular on them. You know, okay, you know, hopefully God will look at this and say, well, he's wearing the scapular. Uh, our God is so in love with us that he has given us, he says, a means to be healed through the sacraments and sacramentals. Now he wants to give us more than he ever has before. God wants to give us more. So he says this. He says very, very clearly. And do you think it's trivial to possess a universal glory in the celestial fatherland? Therefore, Jesus says to her, to Louisa, and to us, be attentive. Why are you washing the dishes? Why are you sweeping the floor? Be attentive. Why are you doing this? It's all for the glory of God. 
It's all for the salvation of souls. When you look at the bubbles in the sink when you're washing dishes, for every bubble, I love you, I praise you, I thank you, I bless you, I adore you, not only for these bubbles, but for all the bubbles that ever existed from the beginning of time to the end of time. I, I adore you. This is an explosion of I love you is going to the throne of God. Jesus says, be attentive. What, why are you doing what you're doing? The kingdom of the supreme will is immensely rich. This is this, the coins that spring forth are so bountiful. Everyone expects something from you and from my mama. It wants the return of the universal love for all the, the human generations. And you, in return, are due universal glory in the celestial fatherland, the exclusive inheritance of one who possessed the kingdom of divine will on earth. So, as we begin to live this life, uh, everyone in heaven is rejoicing. As we begin to live this life, you are actually bringing everybody into heaven. Now, there will be some that will refuse it. It's for everybody. But there will be some who, because of stubbornness and because of sinfulness, will say, I don't want to go to heaven. I'll rather go to hell. That you, Jesus says, you know, it, it kills him. You know, it, his heart is so sorrowful when he sees that. But we want everybody. We want to bring everybody into the kingdom. We want to make sure that even the, the, the worst of souls, if the worst of souls just say, yes, I want this, God will grant it to them. I am sorry for my sins. God will grant him his mercy. But again, there will be some that will, will, will say no. We don't know who they are. We pray that it's very, very few. But uh, uh, our job is to bring the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. As we read and study and put into practice these truths. So we'll end there. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearest Lord Jesus, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. Have pity on me and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat et amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.